we're in for a real treat. We heard from the JP tree guy. Within the next two days, guaranteed that tree is coming down. In fact, as I'm standing out here, I keep waiting to hear, and there goes my garage. It's been a long time coming. This guy did work for us. He was very reliable, but he's very busy this time of year with the way things have played out. But anyway, that's going to be a big burden off my mind because I keep thinking I'm going to have a pancake garage out here. That tree, when you see how they take it down, and I will videotape some of it, it's absolutely unbelievable how they take a tree that size down with cranes and monkeys and gavilta fish and everything. But anyway, this is, this is the news of the day. It's gotten cold again. And we wanted to go for a ride. We only went in for one ride this whole year. Ah, that's not happening. But we do have good news. The good news is, wow, I'm going to go take a look at what we did yesterday. At first, we should be able to back, take the back masking off, see how that new material played out. If it played out well, we want to try to upgrade it, improve it, pass on anything we learn, and see if we can improve the system even more. And if not, we have sandpaper, we'll sand it off and paint the fairing black again. That's what's happening today. And we've had no trouble lately keeping each day just a little bit different than the day before. And we are really looking forward to if that fairing lettering works out. See, it's the Kawasaki word that's going to be challenging. Hopefully we're working on the easy one first and an advance to the more complex one. If we're able to do that, that's going to add a nice little custom touch to this project. But the amount of paint work and the amount of time and the amount of tape and the amount of energy and the amount of hours that I spent out in this really cold garage compared to what we did last year with the FCR, not even close. So what we're trying to do on this year is just focus on quality and really getting that Bentley black to be super, super shiny. But the truth is, even if you just have a one color motorcycle or like a Ducati paint job where it's one basically one color, when you can get that extra high gloss shine on it, to me, worth every penny. And usually it's not that hard to improve on a factory finish because they really don't put a lot of clear on and they don't really spend any time buffing it. And we do. So as I try to make a plan for the day, it is really cold out there. <laughs> when I wear a coat out to the garage in the morning and I'm cold, it's cold. But Treezilla? Hopefully in a day or two you'll be former Treezilla. And my garage will live in infamy. Now you can see I've already moved all the cars out, gotten the ladder out, get, getting ready for... When they take this down, it is quite... We've seen them do the first half. It is quite an adventure. Absolutely an adventure. Now after a nice cup of coffee and Treezilla, saying goodbye to Treezilla, I hope, for the last time. Hey, I wanted to mention... These parts have been drying now, and this is the part we're going to work on today. This is, these are ready for uh, the final finish. And the dashboard came out way better than I thought it would. I'm not sure if I'm going to put an extra coat of clear on that. These, again, not sure. Nose piece might be ready for buffing. Again, I look at each piece, each piece on the rack individually. That part has been up by a heating vent now. The gold lettering is drying. All the parts on this table have been buffed, ready for reinstallation on the bike. Of course, we're months away from that. And that's what makes this interesting. Every day is just a little bit different. So now we did this in a little unique way that I haven't done before. I sprayed clear over this, the first coat. And I'm looking for how much of a paint edge buildup I got by adding that extra coat of paint. I'm not sure I... I'm not sure I didn't win the battle and lose the war until I pull all this tape off. But again, anytime I'm back taking back masking off, I want to do it using a heat gun. I have this part up by the heating vent so that it would be as warm as possible. I want that tape to be warm. The one thing to never do is put this out in a cold garage overnight and come in when the tape is really cold and go... <coughs>
now we get to the part after taking off some of the back masking that I try to look at is this going to be worth doing when I do the second part laying that tape did that give me a nice edge right along the edge and what it did it it totally evened it out because number one you can cut it a couple of thousandths off and then when you put it on it can be a little bit off so this kind of made it uh, well I hope it's going to be a, a productive thing now I want to warm this and this is our stencil to peel that stencil back I'm sure is going to be a little challenging because I see that the, there's a because it had clear there's a little more paint buildup than I normally have but that's the whole idea of doing this is we try to learn from it we try to make each one a little bit better and so by the time we get to do the Kawasaki lettering we hope we've learned enough that we can do a really good job I can see already I, there's a mistake here I had a problem which may torpedo the whole day I inadvertently left that tape in over part of the letter and so I'm gonna to have to figure out how what I want to do here let me show this up close and this is a mistake that set us back you know some time anyway but it won't really matter because I'll show the recovery of it now what happened is I ran this piece of tape here and I should have moved it up I don't, I'm not sure what I was thinking, but needless to say, the, we'll share the information. So I try to make a little plan for how I want to recover from this mistake, and here's the, the criteria. I can see that piece of tape actually did some good, so that's worth knowing. But see, again, this is when you're old, this is what happens. Now, the, the issue is we're going to have a little bit of a paint edge there. So what I'm going to try to do, I'm going to heat this whole area, pull off these letters see knowing how to do a recovery sometimes is just as good as knowing how to do the job because everybody has these problems and you can see the difference in the gold between the paint and this really gold paper so i i really have to get this right so what i'm going to do is carefully pull up the six the five and the zero leave the r back mask everything except the r and then sand as much of this away as i can so it's flat and i'll do that probably with two thousand or 1500 grit paper and then I'll have to back mask the whole part again and then spray this gold and obviously that we'll want that to dry before we go any further although then it would give us a chance to see how this paint peels up after one or two hours so eh, we don't know if, what a, um, how that's going to work now but in the meantime I want to pull up my mask I can pull up everything but the R and again, it's sometimes, and in the course of my making videos for, uh, well, since 87, the, the, the thing that you can pass on to people not only is how to do things, but how to recover from, from these little things like the windy errors. And I always want to remember when Dave Midgley and I were making videos of doing carbon fiber work, especially the wings for the planes, <laughs> there were a lot of errors. And by exposing the errors, it gets more and more people confident that, you can do this work and really you can and people like Scott for instance I'm sure he asked me a lot of questions about primer and stuff well that's the right way to do it and if we can put some of that on a video and in the course of doing this you see this error now if somebody else has that error you don't have to say oh well, yeah. you realize everybody does does these kind of things and and here I didn't believe me I didn't plan it this way it would have made my day complete to just pull this off and move on but Treezilla strikes again. Okay, so it looks like even though we've put that clear, oh, that's really nice. That's really better than I thought it would be. But again, I've got to get these little pieces out. And let's see this one. Maybe I can get this one out first. The five is a tricky thing to get out because it's going to want to pull up when I get to the top part of the five. It's not gonna to wanna to release the way I want, but we'll try to show the recovery and if it works. And what happens too is once you bury this in clear, you don't see any of these little mistakes, but, but I don't want the mistakes there to begin with. This was going to be an issue here.
It seems like this material releases a lot better than I thought it would. So far. <laughs> Boy, so far is such a big word. Yeah, that, the edge on that is not terrible at all. So I don't have to deal with that. Now I'm going to go right up to here. I'm going to have to back mask the rest of this. Okay, because we're going to use that that already. Yeah, the edges on that, really not bad. I may just hit that with a card. It'll be all set. So next step on this is to back mask everything except that letter R. The whole fairing has to get back masked for one simple reason. We're going to be spraying gold with an airbrush, and I don't want any of those little sparkles going onto the part. I want black, Bentley black, not Bentley sparkle. So now I've got everything, the whole fairing is back mass except the R, and the most important thing is going to be to get rid of this ridge. So what I'm going to do is very, very carefully, with some 2000 grit paper dry, I'm not going to wet this at all, and just keep, with a little sanding block, just address that edge and try to clean that up. And then try to make it that you don't see that edge. Well, we were going to find out how that's going to work out. See, but the idea is not to get a giant paint buildup around the edge here and get that to kind of disappear. And what will happen is it will still be visible until you put the clear on. But then if I put the clear on, hopefully it will just fade away. And that will be, a, hopefully, then a good recovery. Well, but again, as everything, we'll see. And luckily for us, we just bought a whole sleeve, a 2000 grit in DASA. And... We're going to use it on this part of the job. Now this is where the technical part of this comes into, and I'm going to have to really look at this close. Ever, actually, if it wasn't for this, we, we would have had a pretty good, uh, pretty good day yesterday, but I'll have a pretty good day when that tree comes down. I don't have to think about that. So I want to try, I'm using the hard edge of a block, and I'm just going to just dry, sand that, and most important, right into the corner. You can't do this with your bare hand. You have to use a block, and this is going to be very, very time-consuming because 2,000 grit paper, and I'm going to move it over just a little bit, and this might take 15, 20 minutes to get that edge knocked down, but eventually I'll have that edge knocked down. And then I'll be ready to go get the airbrush ready again. And sometimes when you make these kind of mistakes, and it's, believe me, it's more common, the more painting you do, the more chance there is you're going to, uh, you know, the more you drive, the more chance there is you're going to have an accident or a ticket. So we're just going to take our time and very, very carefully. It's just, just takes time. And it's just a question of I keep moving this because the paper, when you use wet and dry paper dry, it clogs right up almost instantly. And we'll take care of that. And this is just going to be a time-consuming thing. Now, I didn't want to wet it. I don't want to have water going down over the fairing and everything. I'd rather use a couple of sheets or some amount of sandpaper anyway. But if you, if you do it all with a block, there's a chance that when we're done here, you will never even notice happened. I'm sure that's what the captain of the Titanic was thinking. Nobody will know I hit that iceberg. Now I'm going to try to get this as close as I can on the macro lens before it goes out of focus. So you can see what the, when you feather it in, now that should, in essence, and I tried to bend the sandpaper and get down into the corners, that should, and, and I always say should because we're still in the experimental stage using this material, but as I rub my hand over it, I can't feel it. But that would be, in a perfect world, that'll be a, re a good recovery. Now... And of course, recovering from mistakes is, is part of when you want to have good quality work. But this whole thing is predicated on one thing. I want these not to be, a, not to be anything but a perfect gold match to the wheels and to the other part. And this is the only way I know of, other than some, uh, if you could find somebody that could match it. And every time you find somebody that says they can match it with a decal, you go to put it on, and it doesn't match. And then you're out 70 or $80 dollars or something. This I know is time consuming, but I know it'll match. 
All right, next step, put the gold in the, in the uh, airbrush, airbrush that, and then we'll get a, that'll be a good excuse to have a cup of coffee. Now, it's not raining out there now, but the problem is, and it's a, there's a wind is blowing 100 miles an hour, and when you do it on an airbrush, it's really hard to do it when the wind is blowing. At least that's what I've found. So we're going to try this, and we're going to see if it's our lucky day. And we only have to do that one letter. Trusty Iwata Airbrush. Now it's going to take three coats, I'm sure, but I'm going to let these, I've got two coats on here now. I want to get a, I'll take a coffee break. I want to let this dry. I don't want to have this be any wetter than it has to be. So far, it looks like that's going to be a good recovery. Now, it looks like we totally have eliminated the idea of having that ridge or that step. And the only thing left, I want to have a coffee break. That'll be dry. I'll put the third coat on. Then I can work on that second side and try to incorporate everything we learned doing this side into the second side. And if it's my lucky day, I'll get that side done today too. Anytime you're waiting for paint to dry and you get ants in your pants, that's going to dry 15, maybe 20 minutes. That'll be just enough time to have a cup of coffee and hang out with Karen for a little while. Okay, after about a 20 minute coffee break, we're ready to make sure that's dry. All we have is that one R. Now I can see from here, and I think you can see it, it, do, it definitely needs a third coat, but we've gotten rid of that step that's in there, and I'm sure once that's buried and clear, it'll be, uh, well, we'll know very soon. Now with the third coat on there, I think it's just about as good as that's going to ever be. And I'll wait till the end of the day to pull the back masking. And while I'm waiting for that to dry up by a heating vent, I can work on the other part. So now as we get set to do the second side, again, we it usually goes a little faster and we'll kind of fast forward through this a little bit. Because basically everything's going to be the same and I'll just outline it. We're going to trim this off. I'm going to use a little bit of the spray adhesive, and, it, and for somebody that wants to see the 10 minute version of this, it's on the previous video to this. Just put the light coating of that on. We're going to stick that onto our Orcal, and, which is available at Michael's, and then we're going to trim this carefully, make a border around it, trim out the numbers with a brand new number 11 blade, and saving the little pieces that go in the inside and then rather than get ahead of myself up to that point I'll put a couple minutes of video on too but I don't want to just repeat everything we did but I don't anything I can see that might be an improvement I want to put on here so a couple of things we did learn yesterday you trim the bottom and not the top <clears throat> and not to make that mistake with the R that would be very handy too and you don't need to use a lot of this this just a tiniest little bit that sticks the paper to the oracle just fine and from that point on it's relatively straightforward job pretty much the same as yesterday now the spray glue comes in every, maybe a hundred different kinds you can buy off of amazon even and we just happen to have this one but i will mention one little thing that happens when you use it it gets a big build up on here so before you do it you want to clean that off a little bit with your finger and spray something else till it's spraying nice because if you get big globs of glue on this it can be a problem it won't be as nice and neat as it should be and just to mention something that i find real handy while we're waiting for this to dry also i always have the video that i can look at from the day before if i forget a step or if i forget this came before that that came before this this is always handy to have that and of course you have a youtube channel you just go to the video before if this is Whatever number it is, pick one number less and do the search for it. I think one thing I didn't show yesterday was how much glue to use. This is that Elmer's 
glue. I want to spray it on something else and go out over the part. One pass, and that's it. Now, whoops, as he bumps into it. Now that's got to dry for about 30 seconds, and then we just press it in position. I don't think we showed that yesterday. But you don't want to soak this with glue. You don't need it. Uh, just the slightest amount will hold it. Another little tip, and I'm not sure this was on yesterday's video. I'm not sure. But I do notice that of the oracle, and I cut the piece away, there were a couple of places had a little bit of a wrinkle. Well, we would like to have no wrinkle, of course. And to lay this down on a spot, and I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. Since we don't have to save material as such, that'll be fine. Now, keep in mind, this is just a simple test that we're doing before we do that Kawasaki. Because that Kawasaki, that's going to be a focal point of the motorcycle. And we still have those edging pens to test that John sent. So... At what I suspect is every time I do one of these, it's going to get a little bit better than the one before. And we'll try to put all those little upgrades on the video. But we don't have to put the, like cutting this out is going to be redundant. So I, I'm trying to make this as interesting as possible when in reality some of this is pretty boring and redundant. So a couple little things that I think are upgrades worth mentioning is what I did, I used this straight edge to try to do some of the lines and the, you can only use it on some of it it's and it's actually the hardest part is to do the curves but by using this i think i just think this may have been a little upgrade and this one may be the nicer of the two when we're done i don't know but uh well, either way we're in a learning curve we're using new material and by the time we get to doing that fuel tank i'm hoping that we uh we have this down pat so this may be, this, this actually was, I think, one of the upgrades we've made. We'll see. The, now, I wanted to show this because we didn't do this yesterday. And I'm thinking maybe we can do this. Maybe this is a possibility. So what I'm going to do is lay out the tape, just like I did yesterday. And sometimes you can come up with little inventions and little, little things that, in the end, they pay. And they pay good dividends, too. So... This may be one of them. If it isn't, we can always go backwards. Now, I can take the borderline tape off, which is this tape. Again, all this back and forth, this is why it's good to have this on video. Because even myself, not even, I'm, not, I'm sure I'm not any different than anybody else. That you get up the next day and you forgot what you did. And I've had that happen again. Now, I wanted to trim this even. Not... I'm not sure if that's going to make any difference, but but it's always good in a case when I take, especially taking that fairing apart, it, there's, you know, a lot of pieces. And so remembering, having it on video is almost like having a manual. It's even better than having a manual because you know if there's something wrong, you did it. Okay, so now if I take this over, and this was this was one of the things I thought possibly would be worth trying today. I, th I think the edges on this one are just a little bit nicer. But here's what I thought I could try. Is set these right in place just the way they are. And I have to figure this out. How do I, how do I want to do this now? Because uh, I can always cut a new set if I screw these up. I want the gold on this side. So... This is going to go this way, and if I screw this up, it'll be, by having it on the end, I can get this a little bit easier, maybe a little more accurate, I don't know, but I'll put the letter in and just see, and I'm not sure this is even worth it, but, although I thought, well, wait a minute, maybe we can make this easy. See, you invent it as you go along. That's the problem. So let me, let's see if we can invent something. It's always good to feel like, now I'll tape this in position. And I can tell it's not upside down and reverse because I can read the writing on the Oracle. So maybe this is one of the upgrades that by the time we get to do the Kawasaki thing, we'll, we'll be upgraded. And again, I have to check because this, okay, this side is the side 
this is the side that has the writing on it. Okay, and that's the line that comes in, so I know that's the right way. And just by poking it, let's just see. Now, see, I know if you really care about this kind of stuff, this little detail upgrade will be worth it. And if you're a decal guy or a uh, you want to buy stickers and stuff, that's fine too. We could still eat pepperoni, but I like this. And this this is what really challenges me is figuring out how to do this. Now I don't know what I I got that somehow caught on the corner here. Okay, there we go. But now you would think that that's pretty accurately positioned. You would think. Okay, so I'll do the other two. I got to do the six and nine. Pretty much the same, and then we should be able to take, this should be in really good position when I flip it and put it on the fairing. So that looks like that'll work out just fine. That, that actually looks like a, an upgrade worth having. And today maybe we'll remember that we have to cut the bottom, and then I have to leave a quarter inch of, this I don't care about up here, a quarter inch of fairing showing, and catch the back, there's two kinks, there's a kink in a fairing here and a kink here. So this becomes one flat piece. So the next step, we got to pull this backing off very carefully, even over these little, the little insets. And once that's done, we're ready to flip it and get it right on the edge of the fairing. So here's the moment of truth. And we don't know until we actually get this down in place. There's a kink and a kink. And I know this is a quarter of an inch up. Now, the oracle should be sticky enough that it stays in place including those little center pieces, which that seems like an upgrade worth uh, worth mentioning and recording. But now to get the tape off of the oracle, this may be a little tricky. I don't want to pull up and maybe it will pull up, I don't know. Pull up those the center lettering, oh, I don't know. Uh, it's pulling that up, okay. See if it's a lucky day. It's pulling that up. That's good. <laughs> and the worst happens, I'll cut another one out if if this is a problem. And that looks like that went down pretty good. Took out the middle of the six. Okay, so now we gotta get the rest of this off. The rest of the paper off. Uh, if only I had little fingers, it would be so nice. Get the tape off here. And this side, by the way, as always happens with anything, even like changing a starter motor on the R1, if I had to do it now, I could do it in a lot less time. But boy, that first time through, holy mackerel. Holy mackerel, there's just some things. And the second time, you have your confidence up and Usually you get cocky and you make some other mistake that you didn't make the first. Oops, look at that. It pulled right up. Wow. Oracalomatic. Look at that. Only one wrinkle. Now that wrinkle there won't even be an issue. I can resolve that right away. Now rather than try to get it, I'm going to just do that. <laughs> Yay, Oracal. Okay, get those pieces pressed down. Now I'm going to try to hit some of the, the straight lines on this with that fine line tape and I'm going to try to do them in the right order not not screw the pooch like I did yesterday there's a little piece of I don't know what piece of paper or something in there I can get that out oh yeah oh yeah okay that's out that's out that's out out okay 
this is more of an experiment than anything else just to see if that's going to be add a little bit of uh, uh, that they're all in order I don't know I'm very carefully monitoring that I didn't make the same screw up here and I have even done that in the past of making something and try to do it over and made the same mistake so all right time to mix up fill up the airbrush shake that gold up and spray oh I got a back mask it oh, see I'm once I'm so excited about this having both of these things sprayed tonight and knowing they're up by the heating vent I'll sleep like a baby Okay, now just to make this a little bit different, I'm not going to put the clear on this side. I'm just going to put three coats of gold. And then I'll be able to see which side, or if it was worth doing it. Because the clear, it seals the edge, but it builds up thickness too. Now this will just, this side will just be uh, just three coats of ordinary airbrush gold with the Iwata airbrush. Not sure you can see that the sun is out you can see how bright that gold is we're gonna get three coats on 20 minutes apart 15 20 minutes apart it's looking really good and then we'll compare the one with clear to the one with no clear see which one we we prefer so this day ends with our repair and our second fairing with the lettering on it and we've done a lot of experiment in these last two days but I hope some of it is it is going to be useful for your project, for, for everybody's project, that you can share the information. And I think tomorrow when we come down here, I'll be pretty excited to see how this is going to look with all the, uh, well, actually if it, if it comes up the way I hope it does, we'll be ready to put clear on these tomorrow. And boy, does that, is that a watershed in a project? Because once these parts are in clear, we can leapfrog our way right into the forks and wheels and tank and... I, I just don't want to get the leapfrog ahead of the frog or whatever, ahead of the turtle. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.